Hey folks, Brian here. This week we are putting out two of our mini episodes from uh, from our Patreon, patreon.com slash late night, which, look, I tried to do a new episode this week. I recorded like kind of a mini uh, tour diary because I'm on a recording trip in Toronto with Danny and Jim Roach and Jarek and Twerp. And then I listened to it and it was awful, quite frankly. And I apologize for that. So I thought we could release, as we do from time to time, two of our old mini episodes, which I think you will enjoy. If you like this kind of stuff, go get these every week at our Patreon, patreon.com slash late and night. Enjoy the show. Hi. A mini. A, an in-person mini. In person. I know. We just had a, a cool experience that I don't think we can quite talk about yet. I actually... Oh, the door's th- open. Hold on. I actually think we can. I think they posted a picture. They already posted a picture? They said they did. Oh, okay. Well, um... And also, we could maybe not name the show. Just... Well, fuck it. Let's just say it. Yeah. I could, I, they're outside. Nobody I listens could go to in these. and ask. <laughs> um, so we at... Uh, in my garage, we just had the Cheap Show lads, Paul and Eli, over, and Tim Heidecker. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I got to record an episode of Cheap Show with uh, with Tim, and uh, Layton engineered. Yes. And got quote, to be on mic. Quote, unquote, engineered. And what you did was very helpful and necessary. I'm glad. Um, and certainly prevented me from running over to the computer constantly to check levels and, yeah, and that I, sort of thing. Yeah, I was very panicked because... Brian told me about this last week, and I've spent that entire week being nervous, like, I'm going to delete the recording somehow. Uh, so, yeah. Really get on that mic. Yeah. I'm on the mic now. Um, this I'm sitting well, in Tim's chair at Tim's mic. <laughs> I, you know, because he's he's so, for want of a better word, well-known, uh, I was like, is he, is this real? Yes. Like, and it was, he was awesome. It was totally real. He showed up yeah. exactly on time. We did the thing. He was he great. He was fucking punctual and polite yep. and handsome. We got in we got in a solid hour of yeah. podcast goodness, and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I think <laughs> the moment he walked in the door, I felt momentarily faint. That has never oh, really? happened to me before. Yeah. I just had a brief moment of like... <gasps> yeah, no, I, I guess I don't really get that anymore. But, yeah, of like, course. And he was, but, he, but he's a top of all time for me, no, you know? totally. Which is why I knew you'd be, yeah, yeah. be here. And we got a picture with we you and Tim. Yeah. Uh, but that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was, yeah. A, that was great. And now we have some gear set up in my garage for live recording and Leighton was here, so it's like, let's just do a mini. Yeah, we're just hanging out live. with Cheap Show Boys and having a nice time on a yeah. Monday. It is a Monday, is it not? Wait, is it? Yes. It is a Monday. It is a Monday. It doesn't feel like a Monday. Um, no, well, that's that's good if you're Garfield, because Garfield famously laden right. hates Mondays. So if today didn't feel like a Monday, I think that's that's what we call the Garfield sweet spot. Yeah, you're so right. Uh, yeah, I know. I've just been in like a writing haze on undisclosed project for the past week, mm-hmm. and just going nuts in Scrivener and research and all that shit, mm-hmm. which is. Uh, I've owned Scrivener for years, and I've never taken the time to figure it out. And well, I don't even know what it is. What's Scrivener? Scrivener is the industry standard, like, book and screenplay and all that shit writing software. It's not Final Draft. No, it is not. Um, but it has a really great, like, hierarchical file structure where mm-hmm. you have, like, the shit that you're writing, and then it has notes in a cork board, and oh. then it has, like, a research folder which is apparently just th- that that's my shit. I have a that's massive great. research folder on this project. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's good. I love having a creative thing to think about aside from the other creative things I'm doing, but just a consuming, I am constantly thinking about this and making story breaks and shit. So yeah, cool. it's, it's like my first time doing, I mean, not my first time, but doing like a professionally oriented writing thing that I'm doing on my own which is a little scary because mm-hmm. uh, at least when you're like writing with another person, which I've done a ton of, uh, it's, it, you know, you have that immediate reaction of the other person being yeah. like, this is good. 
Right. Uh, and then when you get to a point where it's like, I don't fucking know what to do here. Like the other person can jump in and do right. their That's right. strengths. It's also like all the writing I've done like that has just been hanging out with a buddy and shooting shit and then be like, write that down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, I wrote something today. That really? I'm pretty happy with. I'm going to read it to you. Oh. So we are entering the pre-production phase of the next Ninja Sex Party <gasps> album, a.k.a. Under the Covers 4. Oh. And. Uh, oh, you better show me this track list. Oh, I will. It's pretty, uh, dare I say, amazing. Um, and we got a, a gear email from Jim Roach and Twerp and, uh, Lord Phobos. Let's see. Where can I find this? Just a moment. I'm going <sighs> to hang it up. Here we go. So Lord Phobos sent a, uh, a guitar email. And then Jim Roach wrote back, Brian, please don't even look at the words written about any of the guitar gear mentioned below. And then describe some guitar gear. And I wrote the following. So I'm going to read this to you right now. This was sent to uh, Jim Roach and Twerp. Bad news, folks. I read the guitar emails and saw the gear list. I have a list of requirements for this recording session. Number one, no pedals. I'm tired of people dressing up the sound of the guitar with all kinds of nonsense. For these sessions, I want to enjoy the pure, untouched tone of this beautiful instrument. Pedals will not be allowed, and anyone talking about pedals will be escorted from the studio by my personal security detail. Number two, no amps. If you're playing the guitar right, you shouldn't need amplification. If it's too quiet, play louder. I really do want to stress that this is not my problem. <laughs> Number three, no new strings. Once again, if you're playing too hard, that's on you. I will not be wasting everyone's time with bullshit string re replacements. If you break a string, that's what we go with. No exceptions. Number four, no single notes. The guitar has six strings for a reason. <laughs> Use them or lose them. Then see number three above. Only chords will be allowed with a minimum of five notes per chord. Number five, no pentatonics. I should not have to elaborate on this. Number six, no chime-ins. There is one producer for this project, Jim, and one executive producer, me. Anyone caught making suggestions will be escorted from the studio by my personal security <laughs> detail. Number seven, no food or drink. Show up two hours prior to practice, see below, having eaten and drunk what you need for the day. We will not be ordering food during the session because we don't want to soil the studio. Water will not be provided. Number eight, mandatory practice before and after recording. We will be doing full, full days of recording, each day preceded and followed by three-hour practice sessions. Please note number six above. Number nine, no tuning. Show up in tune or don't show up. Number 10, chain of command must be obeyed. We will be operating under strict royal mounted police rules. Insubordination will be penalized harshly. If you don't know the chain of command, look it up. It's not my job to do your work for you. And above all, let's have fun. Can't wait for January, Brian. I, I like the rigs of dad influence there. Yes. So I had to read that because I was like, I wrote something I liked. And yeah, five people will see it unless I read it. <laughs> we'll now. have to deal with this shit in their inbox. Yeah, I would like to receive emails like that from people I know. Yep. <laughs> what What's a good email address that people you don't know can contact you at? Right. Uh, you know, I have a friend in the industry who made a very, very successful game, the kind that draws a lot of gamers. Uh huh. Capital G well, I gamers. A timer on this. They uh set up a ringer email account that's the public account mm -hmm. that people can email and his actual email is private so every once in a while <laughs> he'll get drunk and read the email that's the one oh that's that, great yeah, yeah which is genius that's very smart can people find your email if they want to yeah i think it's on my it's on your thing, okay. Twitter and stuff um, for business inquiries. See, people can't find my email. Uh, I mean, people have guessed it, but I don't make it public. That's smart. And whenever I get an email, it's, it, is it smart though? Because I don't even have like a fucking contact form. <laughs> so how would P, someone who wanted to like hire me for something get in touch? True. I don't know. And maybe NSP email. Um, but when I do get an email that someone like guessed my email from or something, I'm a little put off. Because I'm like, I didn't give you this email. Yeah. And I typically don't respond because I'm like, this is this is an unsolicited email. 
I don't know how you got this address. I'm not writing you back. Yeah, you guessed it, which is not the same. It's also like when people send you emails for work and give you next to no details about the thing of oh like my God. budget, timeline, more yeah. information. It's always just like incredibly vague. And then yeah. I respond and they don't respond. And it's like, well, what was the fucking point of that then? You know what? The, the, what I think is even the worst. Well, maybe I've talked about this. Uh, what I think is the worst version of that is the people who reach out on Cameo and try to book you for things for Cameo prices that are doing a lot of work. Do you still do Cameo? I still do Cameo. That's awesome. I don't get many of them, but I do get them. And occasionally someone will reach out to book. I forget what the fee is. It's like 75 bucks for me or something. Um, and they'll be like, can you write an original song for me now and record it as a Cameo? No. That's fucked. Rejected. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't. Oh, well, look, I can write an original song for you if you pay, pay me, me to my write an rate. original song. Yeah. yeah. But as we know, I don't write any of the Ninja Sex Party music <laughs> anyway. And I'd like to congratulate Dan for writing everything. Yeah. What's uh, What's new this week? What's in the news? What's in the news? What's in the news? Nope. Well, there's nope. in Congress this week, Leighton. I'm glad you asked because I do have some spicy takes on, oh, dear God. on GOP leadership. Dear. Or the lack thereof, should oh, I say. Oh, shots fired. Yeah, indeed. Um, but actually, I really want to uh, come after woke politics is what I'd like to talk about today. Will you read that comment that you read me earlier? Yeah, so uh, I, I don't do this often, but I was logged into the NSP account and I was looking at comments because YouTube will hold back comments for review that are I don't know why uh, and so I generally just approve all of them um, free speech and there was a I, I, I don't have an easy way of reading it right now but I will I can summarize it it was so this is for our new music video let's save the earth which is very good thank you very much I'm very happy and with features it. former guest Alpha Rad and, and former Vernon. guest Marisha Ray and, and Vernon. former guest Vernon Shaw and dare I say future guest Vernon Shaw and future guest Alpha Rad as well. Yes, future um, live you show might guest. Watch doing that oh, on the sorry, table. sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, uh, so yeah, the comment was, you know, the if you haven't watched the music video, first of all, real fans have seen the video by now. <laughs> um, but if you haven't seen the video, it has a uh, a nominal message of environmentalism, but there's a twist <laughs> because it's a comedy video. Uh, but someone commented, this will be the last Ninja Sex Party video I ever watch. Uh, it's like, I hate to see when people go woke. And then there were a few hashtags at the end. Oh, I look forward oh, yes. to seeing them fail. Right? Oh, that's what it was. Yes. I look forward to seeing them fail. Um, and then hashtag go woke, go broke. And hashtag boycott NSP. Now, is it a bit? Perhaps. That was my first thought. My, my my first thought with everything on the internet is, this is a bit. Was it a bit? I don't know. It did not have bit signifiers. No, it's not funny enough, but it Correct. is obvious enough that it feels like a poor bit. Yes. Uh, I do love the phrase, go woke, go broke. Go woke, because go broke. Because all you need to do is to look around at the number of very successful quote unquote woke things to realize that go woke, go broke is just not a valid concept. Yeah. It's also like the kind of person who would say that are and claim that people that they don't like are easily quote unquote triggered. Yeah. Are so triggered by a milk toast message about <laughs> environmentalism. Which is actually a comedy video about yeah. wanting to have sex with a mom. Yeah, like, yeah, it's all a ploy. Sorry, if, date, if, it's more romantic. If anything, it's, it's virtue physical. signaling in its truest form. But And also, saying shit like go woke, go broke is virtue signaling. One it's million just percent, of course. Sigh. Yes. Um, I wanted to talk about a different podcast relevant oh, to yes, our experience please. today that uh, Tim's podcast Office Hours is really great. Uh -huh. And they did... He mentioned this when you guys were recording, like vaguely, and it's similar with on cinema, where like every season he's kind of parodying yeah. a different type of obnoxious asshole. Uh -huh. But he and Fred Armisen just did this parody of Bill Maher's like awful talk show. Oh yeah, Club Random. Yeah, and 
it's impeccable. Like That's great. Fred Armisen stays like straight man in character and it's like Tim's number one goal to interrupt him every single time he talks <laughs> <laughs> while doing like the worst posture. And they've done other videos where they talk about uh, the Club Random episodes and there's one with Richard Dreyfus in it where he falls out of his chair. Like Richard Dreyfus, the actor. Richard yeah, and Dreyfus. he's getting progressively lower in the chair. Old. Yes, he's very old. But um. It's good. I'm yeah, as always with podcasts. I'm not like a regular listen listener. I'll just binge. Yeah, but uh, yeah, highly enjoyable. No, honestly, nobody does better like right wing posturing than Tim bloviating Hacker. asshole. Yeah. I was gonna rewatch his. I feel like uh, I could be good at that. I think you could too, and it's easy. Like <laughs> Vernon and I will get into riffs like that, the kind of riffs that you do on the show, and I get mad at you for. Uh-huh. And it's so easy. Yeah, uh, it's very it is very easy. Yeah, yeah. But it's also you know it's interesting in this day and age because you do those things and you have to trust that people are going to get it because definitely some people won't. Yeah. And then you have to deal. You just have to if you're going to go down that route, 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 route. Huh. I don't know why I don't know how to say that word right now. Um, you just have to be prepared for people yelling at you for something they should have understood was satire. Yeah. I would like to share a story that I already told you, and I need you to act like I didn't tell you this. Sure. But I had a film night. Wait, and tell me a story I've never heard before. Wow. Um, so last night, I had a little movie night with a couple of friends, mm-hmm. uh, Vernon included, and we watched The Exorcist 3, yep. which was great. In 3D. Yeah. And we were very stoned on Vernon's balcony, and we ordered Wendy's, which we were very excited about. And it arrived, and we looked at this beautiful bounty we had in front of us, chocolate frosty, pumpkin spice frosty, which was vile. Oh, I bet. Uh, just a ton of chicken nuggets. And then Vernon picks call up- them nugs here. Of course. Nugs on the reg. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he, he picked up his 10-piece nugget, and I looked around, and this is a phrase I've stolen from Aaron and Susie, where like, if things are going really well- to say we're living like kings right now yeah so i say we're living like kings right now instantly (laughs) vernon drops his nuggets on the ground and they all go out and then he immediately like no reaction just puts his head in in his hands for like a full minute um and then he was like i'm not gonna eat these i don't want to blow up a spot but (laughs) i will because i think there's no shame in this and i was like what the fuck are you talking about they just hit the floor yeah, it's no big deal just eat, eat them it doesn't matter you freak i have to say vernon is very good at uh what's the word i'm looking for unintentional self-owned but then really <laughs> leaning into him to make him funny yes he's so good at it he also thought that i was fucking with him he was like you're just trying to trick me into eating these so afterwards you can be like haha i made you eat them and i was like vernon you underestimate my propensity for eating food off the yeah. floor <laughs> I, oh, Vernon now, the owner, or the, should we say, host of the Late Night Neon Sign. Yeah, which otherwise which, was going to go in the garbage, question mark? I just couldn't deal with it in this place anymore. I've run out of room for it. It was just, I had to get rid of the rig, which would, would have been right there. I'm looking at it. No one can see where I'm pointing except you. Um, and it was taking up too much space. It was blocking access to needed cabinet space. And so I had to get rid of the rig, the thing I was hanging on. And then it was laying on the ground. And I just needed it to not lay on the ground because it was going to break if it was on the ground. Something would have dropped on it. Someone which would have stepped it on before. it. Which it did before. Which it did once before. And so I asked you if you could take it and you correctly said no because there's no place you have yeah. for it. And then Vernon graciously offered to host it. In his dojo. In his dojo. So I took it to his dojo and we hung it up there. And now it lives there and it worked. It survived the I know. I'm amazed. Shocking. He's moving into another location, though, in the dojo, which is his garage, uh, which is full of punching bags and shit. Yeah. Uh, and which he's is where he chose to move put the breakable it. neon sign. Yeah. Where the most punching in his house happens. Yeah. And he's moving it, and I'm just waiting for the text like, I broke it. He uh, get he better get help with that. There's no way to move that thing and hang it as one human. You can't do it. Yeah, famously Vernon has a custom help neon sign in his yes. place, so figured the neon would which he's had to repair multiple times. Have I have I ever told you <clears throat> Vernon said something once. I feel like I must have told you this, which I thought was maybe one of the funniest jokes ever. His uh his 69 joke. Do you know this? 
I'm sure I've heard it in the past eight years. He once ahead. said that my favorite sexual position isn't the 69. It's just the six, which is me laid in, laying in the fetal position crying. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's. I thought that was really funny. I love. that The NSP lyric, 69 without the nine, was inspired by, wow. by that joke. Yeah. I. 69 is, I love the, the thrall that it has over a certain age of adolescent. Oh, yes. Where it's just like the funniest shit ever for uh-huh. some reason. I was like saying 69 and laughing before sure. I knew what that was. Of course. I assumed that it was period related. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I don't know why. why but that's what I was going with. Because the with. 60s were a turbulent period. Oh, my God. I think it was because it was used derogatorily by all of my male friends towards me, so I assumed that it well, was... Well, how do you... Wait, how? How would they use 69 derogatorily? Middle school boys who use 4chan a lot and are all in love with you a little bit and hate you because you won't date them. Uh-huh. We'll call you... We'll say all sorts of shit. So I couldn't use it in a sentence, but well, I that's remember Well, that's my... Can you use it... To me, derogatorily. Like, I bet you couldn't even 69 if you try. Is that or It was definitely in the opposite direction of like, I don't even remember, but it was like accusatory. Like, oh, I bet you, like, like, uh, of a piece with wine dined in 69. I guess. Or like, you must be doing this all the time must have been the context. Oh, I see. Uh Uh-huh. Cool. Because me... In middle school and also to now, it's just like, yeah, that's me, real big sex haver here. Yep. Like, it's not my vibe. 69. Na- I, is there, have the, has there ever been a human being who 69s regularly? Possibly? I've known people. I think the, the move is you have to do sideways, not sure. one on top. Yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, gravity is not your friend. No, it really isn't. It's just the nose puts you right at the butthole. That's correct. And I'm not. That's that's the place where your nose doesn't want to be the most. Yeah, you at least like want to just do the rotation. Yeah. And then no butthole. That's true. No butthole. No butthole. But thank you for saying butthole. My favorite pronunciation of any word. It's important to me. Uh, I like it. Well, because of the Comedy Bang Bang episode where it's said like a robot. You asked me to touch your butthole. <laughs> I would like to enjoy comedy bang bang and I just I've never <laughs> been able to get into it and I've Very tried. Valid, yes. It's that totally makes sense. They do so many great things and have so many great people on. I am the first person to admit it is an insufferable cool kids club. Yeah, it's very inaccessible too, but to be fair, everything I like is incredibly like actively that, hostile. Yeah. Uh there are many of my favorite comic voices on it. Uh, everybody's been on it. Everybody's been on it except Ninja Sex Party. Uh, but the I do I do lo- love a lot of the people on it. It's it's one of the few podcasts where I've heard every episode ever. Wow! Yeah, I, I started listening at the beginning when it was Comedy Death Ray Radio because I was you know I'm an alt comedy fan. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to hear it, so I've heard every Comedy Bang Bang ever. Holy fuck. Um, Did you watch the IFC show? I've seen a few episodes here and there. I didn't see the whole thing. It got, at some point, it had a famously uh, troubled production for some of the middle seasons. Oh. Uh, What exactly went on, I don't really know, but I think they were just, they had to produce a lot. My understanding is, and, and it, you know, they were just working very quickly. Yeah. There's a lot to like about it, um, but... I didn't know. I didn't really watch that much, but I like supporting I, a lot of the people who come through there. IFC is like dead, dead, and has been for a while, I right? Think so I don't certainly couldn't tell you anything that's been on it. That was such like a formative thing. One of the shows yeah. that I never see anybody talk about that Jory introduced me to is Food Party with Two Tran. Oh, I haven't heard. I haven't even thought about that in forever. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. For people who haven't seen it, I think yeah. it's on archive.org, but it's like a very mm. Peewee's Playhouse, like Muppety, uh, yeah. c- quote unquote cooking show. Uh, and Tutran is awesome, has a great Twitter account, uh, and is just a, a neat person. And she just does this like chirpy sort of deadpan thing. And it, it gets like really violent <laughs> on the regular. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. I have something for you. Oh. My online trivia site. 
<gasps> which I love, did 12 questions about Animal Crossing. Would you like to answer Let's them? fucking go. Okay, this great. is going to... Okay, so I will explain to you first. I need you to get into On Cinema because we hung out with Tim today. But there is a recurring thing, a segment called Stump the Buff. Oh, and right, yes. Greg Turkington is supposed to be like a real expert. And every time they do Stump the Buff, is <laughs> he fails every single one. And it's great. Okay. Question one. Animal Crossing events are often based on actual holidays. While there are events that share the same name as their real-world wor- real world counterparts, such as Halloween, most events based off of holidays have a game-specific name, such as Toy Day instead of Christmas, or Shamrock Day instead of St. Patrick's Day. Name the two official holiday-based non-tournament events in New Horizons with an animal in the name. Note, animal names contained in a larger an- non-animal word do not count. Do you need me to read the question again? No, uh, but that animal part is making me doubt because I want to say for Halloween, it's like the Spirit's Eve festival. So Uh, they have animals in the name, but they're not in a longer non-animal word. Okay. The other one is with the fucking rabbit who sucks, which is the Easter analog. I don't know. I'm blanking. You were close with rabbit. It's Bunny Day and Turkey Day is what they're looking for. Fuck. Okay. Zero for one. I always ignore the events. Name the item sold by Daisy May in New Horizons it's or Sao Joan prior to New Horizons on Sunday mornings. You turnips. already got it. It's turnips. Name the two possible types of eel that a player can catch in New Horizons. Please provide the names as referenced in the official dialogues that occur when a player catches each species. Both names are required. I caught blank eel. Can it tie itself into a bow? And I caught blank eel. When you're in love, that's blank. Okay, so it's a, a moray eel. That's Re- one of them. Read the other one's description, tie it in I a bow. I caught blank eel. Can it tie itself into a bow? Oh, fuck. I don't know. That is a ribbon eel. Ribbon eel... All right, question four. In New Horizons, there are three artists whose two works of art will always be appraised as genuine. One artist has their two works represented by the common painting, the gleaners, and the moody painting, the sower. A second artist has their two works represented by the nice painting, the pfeiffer, and the proper painting, a bar at the Folie Bergère. Is that how you pronounce that? Folie Bergère? The third artist's work are represented by the flowery painting and the twinkling paint- painting. All three artists were active painters in 19th century France. Name any one of these three artists. Van Gogh. Can you get me? That, that is correct. So you've answered this question correctly. Can you name the other two? Rembrandt. No. Which I don't think is it. Uh, it's not French, for one. Piss. Monet. No. Fuck. Manet. Manet. Yes, not Claude Monet, but Edouard Monet. And what's, Monet. what's the other one? Jean-François Millet. Oh. The last name of a 17th century French philosopher and the SI unit of pressure both share the name of this Animal Crossing special character. Well, I've already got this. I'd wager that the name was a very intentional choice, as this other will often appear from deep underwater to dispense his many pearls of wisdom. So I can get this based on the SI unit of pressure, but I'm curious if you know this. Oh, it's... Here's a hint. I'd wager. Oh, it's Pascal. Correct. Pascal. Name the as depicted in New Horizons flower that spawns whenever the player has achieved a five star island. Despite its name, this flower tends to grow on the edges of cliffs in the game. And while this flower has several common names, including Maybells and Glovewort, the name used in Animal Crossing contains another flower from the game. Oh, God damn it. I can't believe I don't remember this. I, I picture it. What is it? Lily of the Valley. What's the alternate name for it? Uh, this says Maybells and Glovewort. That's all uh, I'm getting here. Shit. I was going to say Jacob's Ladder for some reason. Using the name given in Animal Crossing, identify the type of clam that can be obtained by digging in the sand. Regardless of whether this is actually your favorite flavor of clam, it is used to create fish bait in the game. While this clam is also known as the Japanese Little Neck, Animal Crossing uses another common name that shares its name with a world capital 
of another nation of islands located about 1,900 miles away from Tokyo. Oh, my God. I don't know. That is a Manila. Piss! Give the full name of the official flight operating service in Animal Crossing. Its acronym will not be accepted. The name is quite ironic, or apt however you look at it, especially given the species and occupations of the staff members Orville and Wilbur. Dodo Airlines? Correct. Contrary to popular belief, this is not the official flag carrier of Mauritius. In New Horizons, there are only two native fruits, fruits that grow on hardwood trees in the game, whose singular name matches the English name of an Animal Crossing villager, one being a peppy hamster and the other being a sisterly dog. While these two fruits have other real-world varieties that are different colors, the fruits in the aforementioned villagers are all the same color in the game. Name both fruits. Apple? No. That, no, that's correct. Apple and... There's pear They're the same orange. color. Cherry. Cherry. Cherry, correct. All right, three more. Of all the bugs in New Horizons, there are two that have the ability to attack a player so severely such Scorpion that a single and tarantula. Attack, correct. Wow. They're very scary. Name the item whose golden version would complete this following unordered set. Golden axe, golden net, golden rod, golden watering can, golden shovel, and golden blank. Okay, so it's net, shovel, slingshot? Slingshot is correct. The final question. Provide the full name of the organization that regularly inspects and grades the player's house on a rating scale. The Happy well, Home Academy. Correct. There is actually, it says Happy Home Academy or, can you guess what the alternate is? It's very close. I don't know. Happy Room Academy, it says also. Okay. So uh, you got, what, half, roughly? Yeah. How'd you do on it? I don't know any of those. I mean, I would have gotten Pascal because of the physics thing. Yeah. Otherwise, nothing. Um, so I was expecting you to go much higher. How, how does it feel to be a fake gamer girl? <laughs> that was a real stump the buff situation. Yeah. I, yeah. Damn, humiliating. I understand that. I fully expected it to be ones from other games as well. I guess Happy Room Academy is, references other games. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I'm trying to think. Are there any other fun ones here? Something that's within my wheelhouse or yeah, that's at least what I'm looking for. far enough out that it's not humiliating. It doesn't honestly look like it unless you I, want me to read the author's behaving badly one, which may not. I don't think it would get any of them, but. Yeah. You know what? I'll just show it to you later. Okay. Uh, well, how are we on time here? Didn't you set a timer on your phone? I did, but I started it late. Piss. We're at half an hour. We have some more time to kill if there's anything else you'd like yeah. to discuss. We're in person. Le okay, so it's been a while since you've been <clears throat> in the garage, and normally we have a guest. It's just the two of us. Are there any items you'd like to inquire about in the garage? Uh, I can. We can describe them. And... I've seen all of these yeah. before. Yes, of course. You've been in here many times. Is there one above your computer that's missing? Yes, there is. And I took it down because it's a Sharpling and Worcester poster. And I know Tim knows those guys and I didn't want to seem like a weird fan. So I took it down to avoid having yet another Sharpling and Worcester thing up while he was here. That's so fucking funny. Yeah, it was ju just, just due to embarrassment. So it's actually, it's right here. <laughs> Brian is pulling it out from under the table that's, that's typically behind him. <laughs> Oh my yes, God. that was a very intentional choice because I was uh, like, I don't know, <clears throat> probably would have been fine, but no, I building up to this, it was like, don't be a fucking freak, don't well, be yeah, a freak. That's right. Yes. So um, yeah, and the other things that I would want to inquire about or at least comment on are ones that you probably would not want to talk about. <laughs> oh yes, that's true. They're wonderful though. Yes. Um, yeah, you know it's weird. Like uh, of the stuff in here, there the the only stuff where it's like. Hey, I'm a fan and I have their thing is like the Sharpling and Worcester stuff. Yeah. So, the rest are diplomas, NSP stuff. Pictures of Audrey. Pictures of Audrey, art by Audrey, late night poster, Barnes and Noble signing poster. I will say the one that I am the most embarrassed of is the, so we got it when we did our, what is that? 2018 tour. Uh -huh. We have a big tour uh, poster from 2018 that lists the dates and was given to us by the, uh, what the, 
Booker. What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, whatever. The uh, company we booked the tour through. And it includes the number of tickets sold and the uh, gross profit, the gross on the tour. Do you see that? Oh, my God. I've never, like, paid attention Look, to go, it. And it's the tackiest thing in the world because there's a dollar amount listed there, which, by the way, is nothing close to what we made on the tour. Right? That is the just, like... Wait, where's the dollar amount? Isn't it on the bottom? Yes? Yes. Yes. It's a big number. That does not take into account any of the tour expenses or relate, you know, or indicate what I personally made off that tour. But having that number there, which is a large number is very embarrassing. The the like position behind the door, I know that's I, very on purpose. That's the embarrassment position, but I notice that there's a late night poster under that. Well that's that's because there there was wall space there. But you'll notice actually there's wall space there now. I haven't uh-huh. uh, put it over there because that's where there's an electrical conduit near the mm. fuse box. So I'm reluctant to put it there, but I could. I could. could. So it, that, yeah, the late night poster is not there due to embarrassment. That's because that's where the wall space was. But we can switch. Look, we'll have a new where one would for you the put, live show. Where would you have put that poster? We can, you you can help redesign the garage. Nah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need to design the new poster. I think we. So since we're not doing this, I'll say it. Uh, I wanted to do. I wanted an excuse to do a really pulpy sort of thing yes. and I wanted to paint because I've always wanted to do a late night asset where I paint both of us. That was actually what yeah. the original like image was going to be for the first poster. It mm. was like half of each of our faces yeah. on opposite side of the poster but uh, I was trying to find a movie poster to parody from like 60s era mm-hmm. and we wanted something with night in the name and so I picked Night of the Hunter which has a great... Which we came... We both suggested at the same time, which I thought was fun. Yeah, and I did a sketch for it. Brian took like a picture, so he was in the pose of, I forget the actress's name. Who is, wait. I forget. Yeah, who is that? Okay. Isn't the guy Robert Mitchum? It's Robert Mitchum, yeah, but I can't remember the, is it Jane somewhere? Okay, I can't remember. Anyway. But um, yeah, it was just like. It's all, it's like an ugly yellow color, and I was gonna adjust that anyway. And then it's I was not like, "Not a good color." Who's gonna get this reference and appreciate it enough to buy it? I would not have gotten it if I hadn't been looking at the poster. Yeah, yeah, it's See, a deep it's a deep cut. I haven't even seen Night of the Hunter. It's just love and hate. That's what everyone knows, right? Yeah, that's the trivia. I told my therapist. I had to explain that to my therapist, who is like has no media knowledge, which is right. so fucking funny yeah. to me. Except for The Sopranos, which he'll bring up unprompted. Yeah. And also he was like, so I was Which watch- makes sense as the one show a therapist would know. Yeah. Right? So, and then he was like, so I was watching The Last of Us show and I was like, what? No. <laughs> That's based on a video game. And he was like, I had no idea. <laughs> the uh, I had a pair of WFMU gloves for a while that said love on one and WFMU. Oh, on that's the other, so cute. Which is really cute. I love that. Yeah, I need to watch. I feel like I watched. Oh, I I started watching the Clockwork Orange, which I had never seen. The the movie. Yeah, the movie, and I was reading the book too. I got halfway through. Never read and the then book. I was like, actually, that's not true. I read it in high school. I love it, and I picked it up because Anthony Burgess wrote it for beer money right. in three yes. weeks, and so I fuck with that. Uh, and I was really enjoying the book. I need to finish it, but the movie, I was just like so bowled over by it and i did not have that i was like i am too tired to give my full energy there's to a this. lot going on in that movie yeah yeah it's fucking amazing it's pretty awesome yeah i they're very that's not true there are like big gaps in my kubrick i've never seen barry linden and neither have i actually that might be a good future i would happily watch barry linden together yeah me too um that would can be we find people one. named barry and linden to watch barry linden with that would be terrible and pointless, but it would be fun. Yeah. I haven't seen... What are other Kubrick movies? Uh, I've never seen Paths of Glory. I've never seen that was, either. This early one. I saw Spartacus a long time ago. I haven't seen Spartacus. Um, uh, of course, 2001. Yes. Um, what are other Kubrick? I've never Stra- seen Strange Full Love. Metal Jacket, actually. Full Metal Jacket's really good. Um, what else is there? Of course, The Shining, which we know we have both seen. Um, I'm looking forward to my annual Christmas rewatch. Yes, indeed. Um, Eyes Wide Shut, which I've only seen yep. once, but I actually do want to see again. Yeah, uh, it, it wasn't my favorite. I think, 
who were we? We were talking about Ryan Gosling and Ryan Reynolds on an yes, upcoming episode. On an upcoming episode. Uh, that's like our Halloween episode, essentially. And just like there is a league of actors that are so like plastic to me that I just don't buy them and stuff. And yeah. Tom Cruise in that movie, I just cannot buy. Yeah, you know that. Well, that, but this is why I want to rewatch it because I was talking with a friend of mine the first time I saw it, which was admittedly on a small TV. Uh, I was like, I hate this. The pacing was glacial, and I don't yeah. mind slow movies. But my friend was like, No, no, no. It's actually really give it another chance because it is really worth it. So, um. Something tells me that maybe after being married for 16 years, it might hit a little different. So I'm going to see if that's true. Yeah. Um, get that sex cult What are content. the other? Oh, yeah. Well, I that's the problem is like, I'm already in a bunch of sex cults. So <laughs> right. do I really, it's like, you know, I, like, I want that to be a break from work. Yeah. Right? Not just back at the office. Yeah. I the, get that. We're missing Kubrick, aren't we? We are. Oh, we're in the danger zone pulling our phones out. No, we got to look this up, though, because they're definitely... Hold on. Stan Kubrick. I bet someone called him Stan, and he was mad about it once. Yeah. I, one of my favorite Kubrick stories is, you know, with George C. Scott on Strange Love, who I love. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched Exorcist 3 last night, so I'm hot on that train. Uh, he Olita is the one we did it. Oh. Um, but he he would do like a really subdued, serious version of the character, and then Kubrick would be like, "I'm not going to use it, but do a really silly one, and then uh -huh. he only use the silly ones." That's all I didn't know. Which that. works that great because he's so funny. His pratfall in the movie was like, yeah, accidental. <laughs> it's such a good one. We did forget uh, Doctor Strange Love, but you just mentioned it. That's, I, sa that's I said it before. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's everything, honestly. Then there's a bunch of like very minor ones from the fifties that the nobody killing, ever talks about. Killer's Kiss. Yeah, I guess there's like genre stuff. I've never seen these. Yeah, I uh, I would like to see Lolita. It's great. Yeah. I haven't seen it in a long time, but I remember it being basically a comedy. That's fascinating. Yes. I know it established like, boy, where would Lana Del Rey be without that movie? Oh yeah, you think? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But I mean, maybe a, a movie that wouldn't be as popular today, huh? Yeah, it's they a... did remake it though. Wasn't was it Jeremy Irons as? It was somebody Darryl notable Bear? as. Um, Who was it? Dolores. Yeah. I forget. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, I I I don't for. How few movies he has, I can't believe I haven't seen all of them. I know, like, right? And I, he's it's a not great... that many. They're only two or three hours long. I always really enjoy his movies, like even yeah. Full Metal Jacket, which like I just almost can't bring myself to care about war movies. Yeah, I don't like war movies in general. It's just not my vibe. Here's my thing about war movies. There's too much fighting. I, I've been meaning to watch The Deer Hunter, which is a I'd war be movie. curious about seeing that. I, there, there are a bunch of 70s things. Dog Day Afternoon, I've never seen. Mm -hmm. uh, Deer Hunter, I've never seen. Have you seen Straw Dogs? No. I've you would hate Straw, Straw Dogs. Dogs. Uh, what's another 70s one I was just thinking about? Deliverance, I've never seen. Um, it's all right. I don't. Yeah. Do I need to see it? I don't know. Dog Day Afternoon sounds legitimately interesting, and people talk about it. Yeah. That early Pacino stuff can be really great, too. Yeah. I like the era of um young de niro yes because as he gets older like mean streets era yeah which raging i haven't seen bull. and i haven't seen raging bull i think i'm mostly talking about king of comedy and taxi driver oh, it's the best which are both fucking great love king of comedy it's awesome yeah. i watched it before seeing joker joker your favorite film i can't wait for the second joker to come out i am interested in lady gaga and I love Joaquin Phoenix. I still haven't watched Bo is Afraid, which I'm kind of shocked by. I was just talking to someone about that the other day. Maybe it was Paul and Eli, and I really want to see it. Me too. I really want to watch it because everybody one, just keeps describing too, yeah. it as like two of two to three hour panic attack. Yeah. Which I love. Uh, very, you know, Safdie brothers do that yes. really, really well. Yep. Oh, I appreciate it. And don't they have a new thing coming out? Safties? Yeah. Oh, I don't but, know. But, but only one of them. And it has oh. Nathan Fielder and Emma Stone. Oh, oh, that's the was it called the Curse? A Curse, yeah. Isn't it, it's a. I think it's a a, a movie on streaming. That's okay. a sad. I didn't realize it was a safety thing. Yeah, it's only one of them. It's the guy who is like usually 
Benny the is movies. the actor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's also like I was Teller, right? In Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I tried watching interviews with them because I think they're fascinating. And it's the other brother has such like, please pay attention to me energy oh, and yeah. just like talks over everybody, including Benny. And it's like, how do you fucking put up with yes. this man? It's just like, let him talk. Can I propose a, a parody song for you? The Safty Dance. Right. Yep. We can you can film if you want to, right? Yeah. You can, that's as far as I can get with that offhand. I don't remember the lyrics, even though we covered it. Um, <laughs> you cover? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. We did. I was obsessed with that song when I was a kid. It's a great song. Do you remember the video with people like? Oh yeah. In the field? yeah. Oh yeah. It was uh, it was big influential. I also loved a uh, flock of seagulls. I ran. Sure, that's a great song. Yeah. Which I made a Polly Pocket. Um, music video for i uh -huh. just recreated it uh that's cool i was really obsessed with roly-poly fish heads uh, uh just fish heads is the proper title heads. by barnes and barnes yeah, yeah, yeah. do you do you know i'm sure we have talked about this barnes and barnes the connection with horror to some extent. no billy mummy who was uh the kid in the it's a good life twilight zone episode oh yeah is half of barnes and barnes holy shit i actually just read the short story that it's based on like a couple of days ago Oh, is it a uh, a Richard Bachman or not Bachman? What's the guy's no. name? Matheson. Matheson. Is it one of those genre guys no. that Twilight Zone always used? Uh, I forget the name because I was really interested in reading his other stuff after it, and it's like kind of hard to get your hands on mm. his stuff. But it was a great short story. Like it was really wonderful. Uh, because I just go down. The, I love ho short horror stories, and I would someday. Like to write a short horror story I think anthology. You would be great at that. Have you read? You must have read this. The things. The things. Do you know about this? Is it the point of view of the thing? Yes. And the thing. Yeah, I love that one. That's a good one. It's hard to recommend to people because of that final line. Correct. Correct. But, but I really love it. It's a great piece. It's great. I don't and think I we think needed it, that final line. I do think it gut punches you in a really effective oh, way. I agree with that, but it's also like, did we? Did we need to use this particular word for this? Right. Um, that word being thing. <laughs> well, I guess I'm the thing, said the thing, as it <laughs> sauntered off into the distance. Sure is great being a thing. Yeah. The end. Did you ever play the I have no mouth and I must scream point and click? You know what? I never did. I've always wanted to. I've always been curious about it. I have played a little bit of it. It is like harder than already hard point and click. Yes, clicks. I've heard about that. Yeah. But Harlan Ellison doing the intro is so iconic. Yeah. There, yeah, there, there's a golden age of like, what the fuck is going on? Adventure games. There was a Fahrenheit 451 game that I played as a teen. Um, there was like a claymation Poe game that Jory has told me about. Oh, really? Yeah. There was a, uh, a famously a Neuromancer <clears throat> game, which we have discussed on the show. Um, that was cool. I haven't finished Neuromancer still. I really need to. And I want to read the sequel to, I forget what it's called. Oh, uh, fuck, if you say it, I'll know it. April. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, well, I think we minied. Well, that's a mini. Yeah, that's live good. in person mini. It's fun. Always good to do yeah. it live. Let's see what time it is. It's 4.40. Oh. Somebody's going to be home from school when we walk out this door. Holy shit. And I'm sure we'll attack you with hugs. I am ready for it. Great. All right. Bye, everybody. Excellent. Goodbye. See you on Friday with another banger. Well, here we are. Oh, dear God, it's a mini-sode. It's a fucking mini-sode. Run! Mini Run! Yeah. Everybody head for the hills. I, uh... The... Yeah, go ahead. I have a, a thing that I want to rail Ooh, on. Coming in hot. Yeah, I am. Um, with these lukewarm takes. I... <laughs> <laughs> coming in hot with lukewarm takes, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like that a lot. Yeah. Trademark. Um, mm -hmm. I am... Now that we're getting into, like... The weather is pretending spooky it's cold. season. You can say spooky season. It's so cool to say spooky season. Isn't it cool to say spooky season? I'm not. I, I, I don't. It's spooky I don't, season. I don't use the word spooky. It doesn't fucking mean anything anymore. No, um, that's true. Spooky. It really doesn't mean anything. It, what it means is it's after September, but before January.
it means I like pumpkin spice lattes, which is fucking true. I do. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally staring at an online shopping cart that has leggings and Uggs in it because I'm that bitch. Anyway, um, so I'm now on the hunt for new sweatshirts because that's like when I'm thinking about the platonic ideal of cold weather, I want to be in a sweatshirt, not a hoodie. Not a zip up hoodie. Mm -hmm. I don't need a hood. I haven't used a hood since I was 14. You want a pullover sweatshirt. I want a pullover sweatshirt. And my favorite one, which people see me wearing on the show a lot, is the main sweatshirt. That is my favorite. It's a Gildan's. No, no, no. It's it just says Maine on it. And it has Oh, like the state. The blue one. Yeah. I don't Uh, remember seeing that, but okay, yes. I bought that 10 years ago at mm-hmm. a yard sale when it was mm-hmm. already in terrible shape and I wear it constantly and it's literally falling apart. It mm-hmm. looks like shit and I wear it constantly and it's my fa- it's the perfect amount. This is a decade plus of wear on a Gildan sweatshirt so it is like the softest most mm-hmm. comfortable mm-hmm. and I am now on the hunt for a replacement because I think it's only a matter of time before it becomes unwearable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh mm-hmm. And I am trying desperately, like I'm scouring eBay and Etsy for like vintage Gildan sweatshirt. Uh, And it's just, I want to replicate that 10 years of wear. I wish I could just put it in a machine and just do 10 years of wear on a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's really my And you don't care too much what's on it or you do? Not as much. I don't want a plain one. Like the thing that I regularly do on eBay is searching like novelty sweatshirt uh mm-hmm. tourist sweatshirt souvenir sweatshirt like yes, i just want course. something a little weird on it um mm-hmm. and i find some some pretty good ones i actually what so, about something that says i'm with stupid but the arrow's pointing up i love that shit i i love that shit to death it's so there's like a graphic design element where like you can totally see the font on that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um yep i so on new year's eve of this year is when I famously drank several, uh, uh, what the fuck are they? Uh, not high noon. Uh, Blue what moon? the fuck is the salt? No. <laughs> white what's, claw? What's the White claw surge. Not knowing that those were higher <laughs> right. ABV and then Twizzler yeah. vomited all over myself, which not only ruined oh, yeah, my skeleton right. sweatshirt and my fanny mm-hmm. pack. It also ruined my one denim jacket that I fucking love. Did that uh, ruin the skeleton sweatshirt? Uh, it's, it's not as visible as the jean jacket, but it's like, hmm. you can kind of see it because it's just like the bleaching effect of vomit, no matter how many times I washed it, which is a fat tragedy. Um, but I was looking for a denim jacket and I found a planet Hollywood branded denim oh, jacket wow. okay. that is coming okay. soon. So I'm, I'm excited listening. for that. Uh, have you, had you been to a planet Hollywood? No. Uh, and I was always very like there was one in Myrtle Beach that we would always drive past and I wanted to go very, very badly. And I never knew what the inside of it looked like. Um, so it kind of had like a mythic status for me as a child. I'm pretty sure I went to the one in like Manhattan, Times Square. Was There, there must have been one in Times Square. Oh, right? there was. I read a great yeah. article that somebody wrote where they're like, it is the worst restaurant I've ever I've ever been to and the most depressing place in the world and I go there regularly. <laughs> yeah. Totally. It was like true. a very funny scathing takedown of like they went two Thanksgivings in a row. <laughs> what is your have you been to a hard rock cafe? No, I haven't. Actually, I've been inside one, but I don't think I've eaten at one. Again, I Myrtle Beach. Definitely have been to one. I oh God, where I, I went to one in Denver in the early two thousands for sure. Because it was like, this is way before there was anything cool in Denver. And I just happened to be in that part of town and uh, with some friends and we just went. Uh, and I feel like I was at one more. But what a stupid fucking place. Um, and I should say, yeah. I've been to the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. I played a show there uh, a few years back. Um, wow. And the cool part is like seeing the memorabilia, right? Look, yeah, Prince wore this. Fuck yeah, that's rad. First of all, did he really? I don't know. I feel like half that stuff is just fake. Uh, maybe it's not. Maybe it is. I don't know. Um, oh, shit. I was actually, at, I, I forgot. We I stayed at the Hard Rock in uh, Atlantic City 
when mm -hmm. so we flew out there to film the decision part two video and stayed at wow. the hard rock hotel and casino yeah uh that place sucks shit it's just oh, it's exactly what you think um both atlantic city and that hotel i re here's my hard rock hotel story i may have told this on the show uh were you rock I, hard in the hotel i i did rock hard i was rock hard and i did rock hard and uh so at i don't know five in the morning ish a like an announcement comes on the hotel speaker it, 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 you could hear this everywhere which was like you know I, i'm asleep in my bed wake up suddenly and this now and that announcement goes disregard the alarm you may stay in your room <laughs> and i was like what did what alarm there was no alarm that I heard, uh, and I guess there had been some kind of <laughs> hotel-wide fire. I'm not a deep sleeper either. There was no way this alarm went off and I didn't hear it. It just was not a thing where I was. And then they had a massive hotel-wide announcement to disregard it, which, oh, Jesus Christ. Wow. So that, yeah. It, it uh, is. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> Continue. Uh, the article that I mentioned about Planet Hollywood is from the yeah. Paris Review, Dinner at the End of America. Anybody listening, I highly recommend reading it. Oh, I feel like I, I know that one. I, I, I've i seen it. The, there's a, in the uh, Universal Orlando, they have a big complex with a bunch of different resorts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I've stayed at the Hard Rock one. That's like, I don't know if it still is a good deal. And obviously, Florida is a, you know, a real anti-destination. But mm -hmm. uh it used to be, I don't know if it still is, that like if you stayed at one of the resorts next to Islands of Adventure and Universal, your room key also acted as a fast pass, oh. uh, which is pretty nice. But That's I cool. did a Google. Uh, there are four remaining Planet Hollywood locations. Ooh, the oh, one, oh can, I, can I guess? Yeah, you can. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask one question. Are they all in North America? No. Okay. That's what I thought. Uh, Tokyo? Nope. Hmm. And I'll tell you, there are four left. There are four left. Okay. Um, is this going to be fun at all? No. Just tell me. Where no, you're. it's not. Okay. Orlando. Okay. Qatar. Malta. Okay. <laughs> Malta. And the Los Angeles airport. <laughs> That's one. At, where? Where's there a fucking Planet Hollywood in the? Uh, in hold on. It literally. Planet. I think it's like a little. It, like looking at the picture of it, it's where it has none it? of the where trappings of Planet where Hollywood. Uh, yeah, I need to know what terminal Hollywood LAX. Show me. It oh, is God. three. It says three eighty. So I think that's Terminal Three, right? Uh, no, no, no. Tom Bradley. It's in international. Oh, yeah. it's in Tom Bradley. Yeah, it looks um, fucking grim. Wow, this sucks. Look <laughs> at this. Because if is... there was if there was a standalone one, I would recommend we do a field trip episode for that. You but... make a reservation. Oh my god, it's a destination. Hold on, what happens if I click make a reservation here? What does yeah, you can't do that at the LAX airport. <laughs> Great. <laughs> why would I? Why would that even be an option? View menu. Okay, here we go. View menu. Yes. Okay. About Los Angeles. I'm going to click on about Los Angeles. Here we go. Oh, this is good stuff. Stop by and try one of our classics, including the famous PH Burger or Nachos Grande. Not Nachos Grandes. Nachos Grande. If you're looking for something sweet, our mason jar desserts will do the trick. The brownie cheesecake is layered with brownies, chocolate pudding, and cheesecake, then topped with vanilla ice cream and caramel drizzle. And that is the extent of the About Los Angeles section. <laughs> it's looking at the menu, it is like the most generic shit airp it's airport a, food menu. Of course it is. Is there anything sadder than airport breakfast? Oh my god, it's so fucking depressing. It's there is, uh, how yeah. are air, how is airport food like every you know the classic hackney joke about airplane food. At least airplane food, I 
being bad I can get because the logistics of making that shit work is like way more complex. Uh, Mm -hmm. But at an airport, come on, I'm going to pay $30 for the shittiest breakfast of all time. Yeah, and it it just sucks. There is, God, what terminal is it? It's like... I think, it, yeah, it's Terminal 6 at LAX. Now now we're really getting into the stuff that the people want. <laughs> As if we've ever catered this the, show to yeah. what people there actually want to hear. There is a Wolfgang Puck restaurant in Terminal 6 of LAX that makes me want to die every time I pass <laughs> it. And is often the only semi-viable breakfast option in that terminal. And it is, oh my God, it's just awful. Every single fucking thing on the menu is to to use a word that I read once as a child, vomitrocious. It's <laughs> I think that was in a like a Delia Efron book. Um uh it's just so bad. It's like breakfast sandwich, but the breakfast sandwich is served. This is actually a pet peeve of mine. When you get like a sandwich and it's served on overly buttered bread that's then then been like griddled. And you bite into the bread and the bread is just like oozing butter all over everything. Oh, I, I really hate it. To each their own. Oh I kind of God. enjoy that. Uh, brownie cheese. Okay. So I'm sorry. I'm looking at this dessert thing. Brownie cheesecake, despite being on the about LA section, is not offered on their dessert menu. No, it's banana pudding and other thing. Cause raspberry I like cheesecake. Page. Raspberry cheesecake. Excuse me. Um. I Gift had cards. Ooh. A, a great fucking sandwich yesterday that I Don't think me. you would hate due to the thing oh. that you just said. Okay. But uh, Uncle Polly's, I've never been there in person. I've only ordered from them, but it's like one of my favorite sandwich places. It's mm-hmm. just like an Italian deli and half of the sandwiches are named after Sopranos characters. Okay. Uh, but they have a sandwich that is on served on garlic bread that's like, it's a hot roast beef sandwich just like smothered in gravy and it is mm. divine. It is so yeah, good. No, I don't know why every sandwich isn't on garlic bread. Not my personal speed, but I can <laughs> see why you would like that. Yeah. The the other one that I absolutely love and have sitting in my fridge is it's prosciutto, arugula, fig jam, and I forget mm. the cheese, but it's just mm-hmm. the greatest. The greatest yeah, that's that ever. sounds good. I could I could hang with that. I, I miss Man, there's just something about like an actual New Jersey Italian deli with a giant fucking Italian sandwich on like like semolina or something like that. It is with with bread that can withstand it. Like that's Correct. such a big Correct. thing. And it's yeah, and the, the type of thing I'm talking about, it's got it's like ham, capicola, provolone, shredded lettuce, tomato, uh, oh, okay. onion, red onion, if you're into that, uh, like a, Italian seasoning, like salt, pepper, oregano kind of thing, and then mm-hmm. oil and vinegar. And yep. it's the greatest thing ever. There's just a particular, you can't, I've never successfully gotten one of these outside of New Jersey. Uh, even in New York City, it's not the same. Oh, I love it so much. I'm sorry, that's not true. I had one in Connecticut once, which I wow. was impressed by. Yeah. I uh, yeah. uh, I had tasty cakes recently. I hadn't had oh. them in a very long time, okay. but Jersey Mike's has tasty cakes, and, okay. or some of them do. And I had some butterscotch crumpets the other day, and it made me very happy because I love those little shits. T- tasty cake is it's a it's a Pennsylvania thing, I believe, right? Isn't it like headquartered I think so. in Philly? Yeah, but I always associate. I always got them from Wawa when I went to Jersey. Right. Exactly. Yeah, headquartered in Philly. Tasty cake. God, um, if only we had fucking Wawa's here. Yeah, it uh, Wawa is the best. It is true. Uh, prepackaged soft pretzels. Fuck yeah. I just, I want more places where I can walk in and grab like food and then fuck off, you know, like mm-hmm. just a little easy to eat. I'm going to look up Wawa. You know what was, re- what eBay. really revol- revolutionized Wawa and the like are the like customize your sandwich order at the little screen. Oh. When when that became a thing, all those places got infinitely better. Quick Check, Wawa, all, all the like, you know, convenience store chains. As soon mm-hmm. as you could like just dial that shit in and get your sandwich, it, was, it became a billion times better. Oh. Yeah, I just I love a sandwich. Shout out to Earl of Sandwich or whoever the mm-hmm. fuck is responsible, because that's just 
one of the best parts of existing. I couldn't agree more. And it's hard to find good sandwiches in LA, I think. I do not have a regular yeah. the closest thing I have to a regular sandwich place is Mendocino Farms, which is the which is good, but it's like the fancier version of the sandwich. I don't want the fancy fucking sandwich. I, yeah, I, want a I legit don't necessarily sandwich. want a fancy sandwich, and I don't want one that's bigger than my goddamn mouth. How mm-hmm. dare you? Yeah, that well, if you have to like take shit out to eat it. Or like angle your mouth weird. That's going to be a problem. Especially saw, if it's a burger. Don't do that to me. Oh, I saw someone post something the other day, which I thought was revolutionary, which was like, burgers with a lot of shit should be wider, not taller. And I was like, wow, that That's is so true. Totally true, right? Yeah. I've been definitely craving patty melts again, because there was mm-hmm. a while where I was making patty melts every once in a while and did the full caramelized onions and making mm-hmm, a little mm-hmm. sauce. Oh, mm-hmm. It's just such a comforting, comforting food. You, you know what a sandwich I like? It's like my go-to favorite mid-tier sandwich is prosciutto, fresh mozzarella, basil, tomato, balsamic oil. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. Just, just, I would, fuck, what was I watching? Oh, Jory and I were watching this Russian uh, depression cinema type movie called The Visitor to a Museum. Okay. The guy who directed it, which if you look that up, the poster is awesome. Uh, Uh, The guy who directed it also worked on Tarkovsky's Stalker, and it has very similar Stalker vibes. It was a really cool movie that fell off in the last act like pretty hard, but it had a lot of interesting imagery and was really beautiful to look at. But a lot of it is like people eating cheese and like bread and the entire time we were both like oh my god i want that little piece of baguette with the cheese on it so bad yeah you know there's a lot of like eastern block food that seems awful um but sometimes it's like gigantic bread and like hunks of cheese and some like you know cured meat and you're like oh sounds fucking awesome the last Um, time that I went to uh, Ren Fair, I made the mistake of buying into the fantasy of medieval bread with cheese. And I got like, Ugh. you know, one of the stands was like, here's a sausage and bread and cheese. And it was like, this is the, this is barely a step above like yep. those Slim Jims you can get that also have the cheese in them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I have to say, I like Ren Fair. Food fucking sucks. Oh, it's awful. It's so, and it's so expensive and it's so bad. Like, yep. I've never had good food at a rent fair. Uh, and then you pay for it and you're just mad about what you paid for it and what you got. Yeah. How couldn't you be? It's everything. Literally everything right now feels like a ripoff. Yeah. I went to look at uh, a sandwich place the other day and the sandwich was 20 bucks. And I was like, are you fucking kidding? $20 for a sandwich? But that's not, I mean... You know, even like a, a mid tier sandwich now is like twelve, thirteen dollars. It's at least in L.A. It's fu- it's fucking crazy. But I was like, I'm not paying twenty dollars for a sandwich. No way. Yeah, it's bread and cheese and meat in it. Yeah. Fuck you. Fuck you. It's look, inflation hit a, hit everybody. I get it. But that much it was that much more. It feels like prices jumped a 100 percent. And then the service fees, the hidden service fees, hidden service fees. And like the, I, I want people to get yeah. paid. I do. But they're so sneaky about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why I like a law passed today to get rid of those. Oh, it did. Yeah. I don't know. But podcast stance never tip. <laughs> We're just like that guy. In Reservoir dogs. <laughs> No, fuck that. Uh, tip. I, no, I twenty percent always minimum. There was a there is a new chain restaurant in my neighborhood that is one that I'm very fond of. Uh, and I went there because they left. I'm not confirming nor denying, but I get so many like little promotional flyers left on my gate, and not mm-hmm. once in six years have I ever seen one that I wanted. Like it's just useless shit. Um, but there were coupons for this place and so Vernon and I both got some and we walked with our dogs to go eat Mm -hmm. at this establishment Mm -hmm. oh my god I the poor 
it was like the trenches in there, like all yeah. the employees. Uh, I got to the end of the line after waiting a very, very long time to get this food. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I handed them the coupon and I was like, busy today, huh? And the look that the poor guy gave me, it was just like, okay, I'm tipping you $10. I, <laughs> this is, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, this is, I'm sure every single person in the neighborhood who got a coupon has come in here today. So yeah. Look, I, I feel, of course, in. tremendous <laughs> amounts of sympathy for people in these understaffed, you know, low paying service jobs. Got to be difficult. I've been lucky. I've never had to work one like that. Uh, doesn't seem fun. I must also confess a degree of frustration when someone is clearly terrible at their job and doesn't give a shit. <laughs> like, I understand not giving a shit, but I'm also I would also there. not give a shit. Yeah, 100%. But. I don't know. It's like, it, 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 I feel conflicted about it. I'm not saying you should give it 110%, but like, maybe don't mumble into your shirt when you're trying to be understood. I guess. I can't, I can't fault him. I don't get Like, I, I don't. I think maybe when I was more insecure, I took that shit way more personally, which is dumb. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't, don't take it personally. That's for sure true. Now it's just like, all right, I'm going to make this exchange easy for you. Yes. I hope nobody fucks with you today because that well, is the in and out of a service job. But th that's what I'm saying. It, it, it's exactly that. You really put your finger on it. It's the let's make this exchange easy. And when somebody is not doing it to make this exchange at least easy so we can get in and out, that's when I start to bristle. I, right. I think I literally cannot be bothered by it anymore. Like that kind of thing. I just don't give a fuck. Uh, it's annoying, but uh, I, whatever. It's, I don't know. I, 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 am, I am a privileged, spoiled little fuck. So yeah. I have no leg to stand on. Well, as I enter the sunset years of my life, I have less time, Leighton, than you do. And Oh, clock's ticking. Clock's ticking. You know, I'm, I'm pushing 80. And <laughs> I want to get in and out of the CVS. I'm sorry. Oh, that's true. You know what? Fair enough. I had I had one of those the other day where it was it wasn't but it wasn't the employee. It's like this one CVS that I always go to. Oh. It's yeah. always for some goddamn reason. I get stuck in line. It, it's never the employee. It's the customer where the customer oh, that is, will that not is very shut up. True. That yeah. is the thing that drives oh. me nuts. And I was waiting for like 10 minutes and there was self-checkout, but I needed a bag badly. And it, after 10 minutes, I just walked up to the counter and grabbed a bag and went to the self-checkout. It was, mm -hmm. I felt shitty mm -hmm. about it, but it was just like, this person will not oh my God. stop talking about coupons. I don't understand why there's yep. such an issue. It's, it, it's there. And to, to loop it back to the original airports. When I go to an airport counter, look, I understand people have issues. When I go to an airport counter, it's like, hey, I need, you know, I don't know. It's like I needed help with this one bag thing. Okay. Do it. I get in. I get out. It never takes more than like two minutes. There are people having what seems like half hour interactions with airport staff at these counters. And I, I I'm sure there's legitimate reasons for it. I just don't understand why I have never had that experience is that because they have done something wrong is it because they're in a difficult situation is it because you know something's go i don't know but sometimes you see these people up at these gates and it's like what just explain to me why this interaction is taking forever right now and i never yeah. understand i never understand it i had a a, a cvs thing where i i needed to i was at the uh pharmacy i was picking up a prescription uh, for penis medication. And <laughs> I was, um, no, it's not that. Penis smallening medication. Yes, that's right. Yeah. I have to take pills to make my penis half size. <laughs> that's right. Uh, it's, it's a medical issue actually. <laughs> well, I only have one kid. Um, the, no, but I was waiting to pick up a prescription and the, this, this was a case where not only did the customer in front of me take forever it was an older person the uh person working behind the counter was actively unhelpful i was picking up something for audrey and it had to be like refrigerated and this guy steadfastly refused to look in the fridge <laughs> he looked on 
every counter. And I was like, hey, I think this one's refrigerated. And he just kind of waved me off. I was like, okay. The guy spent 10 minutes looking around for this medicine before eventually ending up at the fridge and then getting it. Drove well, medicine. well, well. <laughs> yes. And then also they didn't send the other stuff they were supposed to send. So. I love that. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, I'm sure all of that's very relatable to all the people listening to this who yep. work service jobs fucking rats off to you. That's... Yeah, I mean, tremendous respect for people who are going through that. It seems very not fun. I think it's, um, I think you can kind of always tell if somebody has cut their teeth in service jobs or is working one just because like it, th there's an understanding that you have of other people when you've had to deal with the ins and outs of people being shits to you yes. for a minimum wage. Um, Absolutely. Just, yes. just be cool. Just, this is the thing. Everyone should be cool to everybody, right? I don't yeah. care if you're the customer or the employee. Be nice. Be Why cool. are we making everybody's lives harder? That's not, let's just, let's just make everything easy and nice. It's not hard to be a nice person. It is. You know what? It's not. I, I feel like it's harder to be a not nice person, honestly, because of all the energy you have to expend to be not nice. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. It's like basic courtesy makes everybody love everybody's lives better. I yeah, I think I have never actually yelled at anyone in my adult life other oh, that's than a good question. Once when I was having a real come to Jesus your relationship sucks and I see that it's hurting you. <laughs> That's the only time. Wait, wait, you yelled at somebody about that? At, like at a friend, at a friend yeah. who was clearly suffering and I was, mm -hmm. I was very drunk and it was just like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> have uh, I yelled at anybody? I don't, that's a good question. I mean, I have screamed Audrey's name <laughs> from a different room of the house. Uh, sure, but that's not attention. the same as yelling no, at that's somebody. Not, that's not yelling at an adult. Uh, I have, look, for me to get to the threshold where I express even mild frustration with oh my god, anybody, much less a stranger, that's a very high bar to clear. And it does not happen often. Um, but th yeah, this is it's, why it's, I, I think and I said this I, on the I, show. Bring, yeah, I bring that up because I felt bad about that one incident of yelling for like a very very long time it's exhausting you feel like shit about yourself for doing yes. it like yes uh, uh, we we can i tell this story yeah i think it's suitably <laughs> anonymous um we are switching audrey to a different piano school oh. because in part rachel watched uh a person in charge of the school ball out a parent. Like Go in public. On. What and do you mean by ball out? Like the parent was trying to figure out uh, a scheduling thing, like where they owed a lesson or, you know, because they had canceled one and the person in charge screamed <gasps> at this parent for like, trying to cheat them and, and that sort of stuff. Like, whoa. And Rachel watched this whole thing go down in like full view of a room full of parents waiting for their kids. Oh my God. And this is not the first time this has happened that, you know, it's the first time we've seen it personally, but we've been told about other incidents. And I was like, I cannot. That sucks. Anymore. Yeah. So, and then the question is mm. like, do you mention that? when leaving. And I am generally of bel the belief that that's a, that conversation isn't going to go well and B it's not going to be heard anyway. So why bother? Yeah, I guess in a probably make them more careful about hiding that behavior, which is also possible. Not yeah. good. Ugh. Yeah. But I was like, who, I mean, that, that's a customer you're yelling at. And, and, and according to Rachel, the the person the 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 parent was legitimately just like trying to figure out what was going on and was not seemingly like a native english speaker and was getting harangued by the admin for like trying to pull one over on them or something 
<sighs> really left a bad. And this is on top, by the way. This is on top of. Oh, I, I have. I don't know how much of this I can tell. I guess I'm not mentioning any names. Uh, hmm. Audrey's piano instructor being on his phone during lessons. <gasps> and Audrey was like, you know, I think this guy's on his phone. And I said, okay, well, benefit of the doubt, maybe he's texting a, a student or something. So, you know, just let's just keep an eye on it and tell me if it happens again. And she's like, oh, yeah, the next next week, she's like, he's watching videos. Oh, my God. And I was, and I was like, okay, that's unacceptable. I said, I can talk to him. I'll talk to him today. But also, if you see him doing that again, you are fully within your rights to say, hey, can you please put that away? And because she is a pretty confident kid, she did. And the guy like scolded her and made a big thing and then was like super petty to her afterwards. What? Yes. I'm what not did he kidding. scold her about? Like, you know, he was like, oh, well, I it was so okay. So, scold is the wrong word. Here's what he did. I couldn't believe this. He was like, oh, well, then I guess I'll never know how long this lesson is taking. So if we go over, it's your fault. <gasps> yeah. Oh, my God. So I talked to him afterwards about that. And I, I was like, that is totally inappropriate. And also saying, hey, you're you're teaching me right now. Please put your phone away is not an inappropriate request at any level. Also, you can set a fucking alarm for stuff like. Yeah. Crazy how that thing that you're watching videos on has a goddamn clock on it. You asshole. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, as, as soon as she told me that I was like, fuck that done. Absolutely not. So we switched to a different instructor who is working out much better. But still, I can't support this place anymore. That's that's so manipulative. Like that flip of like, well, I guess it's going to be your fault if we go. I know like, to a nine year old. Uh, excuse a me. Excuse nine me. Year old. Nine year. Like, ah, oh, for a thing to that a, you are paying for, and not like a little money either. Like a thing we're paying for, and j just attention. So. I don't know. That's that sucks. That's always the thing. I, I never like love that about myself, but it's not like I'm petty by default. It's like once no. I'm given reason. Yes. Like a legitimate reason, then I will entertain my petty gripes like oh, otherwise I'm... benefit of the doubt. Always. But yeah, I, 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 I give I feel like when I have been and this is going to make it seem too extreme wronged. I give a lot of second and third and fourth chances because of benefit of the doubt, because I'm not confident that I'm right about things. Yes. I'm just going to like, you know, I fully think we can talk about everything. But I'm then once you, hit, once you hit that fucking threshold, I am done. And it essentially is impossible to win me back. Like yeah. there, there are some people in my life who I feel like I have given lots of chances to. And then eventually at some point I was like, fuck this forever. I'm done. Out. Bye. Yeah. And, you know, a, a, a couple times people have reached out afterwards to be like, hey, how about, uh, nope. Sorry. Done. Yeah. I, I very similar thing. We're very forgiving up until the point of no return where it's like, man, I really let you step all over me, huh? And this is a bridge too far. I think I've a nice thing about maturing as an adult has been slowly gaining the ability to be assertive. And yes. I think <clears throat> I, I thrive in that zone when other people in the situation who are being affected by it are not assertive where like by proxy, I'm like, well, if nobody else is going to do it, I'm going to yes. do it. Oh, yo, yes. I have definitely talked about this, but I often wonder if maybe coming in hot in the early episodes when I was on Game Grumps as arrogant dickbag was a bad brand choice. On the other <laughs> hand, I thought it was really funny and I completely stand by that sense of humor. So I also think it's really funny. And the fact that you are deeply not that guy um, makes it funnier to me, although I guess people are not always able to see you are not that guy. That's what I always thought. I was like, because no human being would be like this. And then I was mm -hmm. like, oh, well, actually, I guess some are. So maybe, it, maybe it's less uh, obvious. Yeah. But um, no, I, I was going to tell you a joke, but I realized I already told you. 
We've been bitching this whole episode. What's something positive? Uh, something positive. Let me think. Uh, Audrey called me my dude the other day. Oh my god. <laughs> she also called me bruh. Not oh bro. Oh my god, bruh. no. No, yeah. the children but in with a, their bras. In like a funny way, like knowingly funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was great. Throw me the ball, my dude. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, unironically, I don't know if you've experienced this. It's been a while since you've been around her. She uses the word sick all the time. Oh like, my God. Constantly. I mean, constantly. Anything that happens in a video game. She's watching sick. me play Star Wars Jedi, uh, Jedi Survivor. And she's like, whoa, that's sick. Oh, that's so sick. Daddy, you're sick at this game. Oh, look how sick that is. It's so sick. It's so cute. That's so precious. I love it. Yes. Sick. She is fully adopted gamer lingo. Uh, that's hilarious. It's awesome. So, oh, my God. That, that I think, is, is uh, special. That is uh, I'll, I'll tell you other, other positive Audrey things. Um, she, she's obsessed with Greek mythology and has been for a while. Uh, she will be Athena for Halloween. And, uh, she, you know, we listen to like the Odyssey and stuff, kid versions of it. And <laughs> she thinks, uh, the word is not plundering, but plumbering. <laughs> and so she was like, oh yeah. So Odysseus and his men went plumbering on this island, which <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, looking for plums. Looking for plums. I'm yeah, always she, on the hunt for some plum. You know, at nine, there are still a few words, especially bigger words, that she still doesn't quite get. My favorite is uh, instead of paranoid, she says petronoid. Petronoid. uses it regularly. I'm just really petronoid about this spelling test. You know, like. Oh, my God. It's it's great. Uh, I think around the, that yeah. age, I was convinced that miscellaneous was pronounced as malachinous. Oh, wow. That rules. So I did that one a lot. I love Molashinus. That's Molashinus. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Audrey still says pati- uh, Pacific instead of specific. There's a Pacific thing I want. I love that. It's, I, that makes uh, me very happy. It's cute, cute, cute. Um, yeah, I really love it. All right. Those are positive things. I have a cute right, nine year old. Yeah. And I have a cute little dog next to me right now who's a little (laughs) sweetie she it just is so absurd like i was watching shit on my ipad in bed and the position that she got into just like in between like we're getting into the colder months where she'll start being like super duper cuddly again oh yeah and i'm just i'm ready for it like trying to crawl into my sweatshirt cuddly well, That's hopefully you find a sweatshirt she can crawl into. Yes. Put the the intention out there. I'm going to find the perfectly weathered sweatshirt with a vaguely yes. ironic graphic on it. I believe in you. Yeah. Thank you. Let's let, law of attraction, everybody. Yeah. All right. Law bye. of attraction at the end of this mini. <laughs> mini done. <laughs>